Glenn Lowry here. This is the Glenn Show. We're the Black Guys at Blogging Hands TV. So uh, the Moynihan report and all the controversy about that, the Negro family, the case for national action, out of wedlock yeah. birth rates, um, multiple partner paternity, uh, uh, family disarray. So we look today at patterns in the African-American family. We see seven in 10 uh, babies born to a woman without a husband. We see the majority of black kids oh. living in single parent households and so forth. That's a one feature of African-American culture that I think has very far reaching implications. I imagine you would agree with that. But as well, you know, as you know, it's a very relatively recent phenomenon, this, yes. this uh, pattern of family dis disorganization. Yes, it's it a second half of the 20th century phenomenon, probably causally connected to the incentives associated with uh, the uh, expansion of the, the welfare state in the uh, post-World War II uh, political environment, probably connected in some ways or another with cultural changes in the larger American matrix. I'm talking about feminism. I'm talking about changes in attitudes about the nuclear family amongst elites in the media and the academy and the arts and entertainment and so forth and so on. So when I look now today at black culture, African-American culture, and I see one feature of it being extensive dissolution of conventional two-parent family uh, oh. structures, Attributing that to the non-European origins of African-Americans strikes me as odd, and it seems to be overlooking the made right here in America, and indeed made mostly by white elite uh, cadres here in America, uh, influences both of the expansion of the welfare state, uh, but also of the changing uh, uh, signals that one gets from the uh, 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 influential cultural elites of, about uh, what's to be valued and what ways of life are to be affirmed. That's, well, that's hardly I, European versus uh, non-European. That, that, that has, it seems to me, a lot more to do with the internal structure of American social and political economy. Well, I partly agree with that in the sense that the, um, the tolerance of the family breakdown, which is across the entire society, is something that elites have have agreed to. But if you, we know from Charles Murray's recent work that actually it's among the affluent Americans, the best educated, that the family has remained strongest. And the, in fact, the family is still a central feature of individuals' culture, even though it is now being honored in the breach by many people who are less educated. That's It's that element of, of white society that is really departing from individualism and going over to a life of survival. Now, the black situation in minorities in general, it's also Hispanics, you see a weakening of the family. My tribute, the way I explain that is that uh, the culture of the non-West is very much dependent upon external social pressures to maintain, to maintain social order. So we don't see a breakdown of the family like this outside Western countries. We see it actually uh, only in those countries. And I think the reason is that in the West, the moral structure assumes that people have internalized norms of good behavior at a young age, and we then are freer in the rest of our lives. So we don't actually put a lot of pressure on people to observe the norms. We enforce the norms legally, uh, much, much less centrally than, than occurs in, in other societies. So the way I explain the breakdown of the family among blacks is primarily that they're moving from the South, which remained highly authoritative about matters like this and, and imposed external authority on blacks. And then as, as blacks escape that system, move north, they're moving into a freer environment, but that freedom is a threat to them because now they don't have the external pressure to maintain order earlier. So as you say, the breakdown of the family is actually recent. It occurs uh, uh, after people leave the South and also much of it occurs after civil rights. I mean, the, the dominant academic view of uh, social problems among blacks and Hispanics is that they suffer from oppression from the white majority. That was certainly true historically, but that oppression did in fact maintain order for that group. And when they move away from that and come north, then freedom actually 
has a dissolving influence, and they then have a hard time maintaining the structure. This, even though their own values, the things that they desire to do, are, remain conservative and conventional. Blacks believe in the family, and they honor that idea, but somehow it doesn't happen. And that's because they're, they're in a world where they can do anything they want, and that's hard. Whereas the European population has internalized a set of restraints that allow them to deal better with freedom. So they don't use it in ways that are destructive. And that's harder for blacks because they're not coming from Europe. We don't have that tradition. Well, you've seen, have you not, uh, a significant, historically uh, speaking, increase in out-of-wedlock birth amongst, quote, European close Yes, Americans. it's happening, but, they're much, but the level is still much lower than we find among blacks. Well, it's at about 30% of the uh, births now, I think, or 25%, yeah. which is what uh, the level was amongst blacks in the mid-60s when Moynihan yes. was so alarmed about it. So... Uh, anyway, uh, okay. Uh, so external authority is crucial to maintaining the structure of things outside the West. And it's the loss of that structure that I think is the main reason. That's the main factor that explains uh, only pregnancy and marriage. Else, well, child what, what about the pill? Uh, what about feminism? Uh, what about the decline of religiosity? That, that's also a factor. I would agree with that. Uh, the black church, although a, a major force for integration historically, has lost its authority over private life, and it now doesn't really resist the breakdown of the family. Now, you're right to say that that's also happening among white people. Uh, they also have weaker families than they used to have, but not nearly the same extent. And, and that's because, again, the, the structure, the moral structure of European society is much more internalized. And, and therefore, people have a greater sense of self-command, whereas in the non-West, and not only among Blacks, the authority structure is external. People depend upon external structure to maintain order. Uh, for example, in Mexico, uh, the level of unmarried pregnancy is much lower than it is in America. It's when Hispanics move to America that their families start to fall apart, because in America, they're freer. And for them, as for Blacks, freedom is a threat. Yeah. There's another point that I want to make, something that just rubs me the wrong way here, which is that um, having African Americans viewed as a non-Western population seems to me to be arguable. It's true, of course, that we descend at least partly from uh, Africans who were brought to the United States as slaves, but we don't entirely descend from Africans. Uh, most African Americans have European ancestors as well. Um, and the uh, content of African American cultural and social life is an outgrowth of the population's uh, uh, experiences and development coming out of slavery. The, the yeah. The cultural differences between uh, the uh, peoples from which the African slaves were taken vary widely from West Africa, East Africa, Southern Africa, and yeah. so on. They were not the same people by any means. And through the cauldron of slavery is forged a uh, a, a social and cultural uh, uh, profile that is uniquely American, is it not? Yeah. And, and to have African Americans laid alongside relatively more recent immigrants who come from their own, uh, you know, backgrounds of uh, whatever was going on in South Asia or East Asia or Latin America, yeah. to, to have African Americans sit alongside of them as, quote, non-European, close quote, strikes me as, as, as in need of defense. Uh, moreover, I would argue that looking ahead, looking ahead, the, the, the message that I want to try to give to African Americans is to not see ourselves as a distinct and insular um, uh, identity apart from the, the larger American project and the larger American enterprise. I, I believe in not just integration, 
not just assimilation, but intermarriage, miscegenation, yeah. uh, erasing the line. I don't know why blackness needs to be seen in a permanent way as a category apart from yeah. Americanness. It seems to me the real solution to the to the racial conflict that we are beset by in the country is to be found in the margins where black and white and brown and yellow and all of that yeah. are are interacting with each other. And although we sit here in the year 2021, it might be hard to envision in America 50 or 75 years down the line need not have the same insular racial division that that we see today. It seems to be malleable. It's it's endogenous. It's a part of what we get to decide about rather than. Yeah. So so I'm objecting in a way to the pre- presupposition of a of an insular and distinctively non European identity to be imposed upon oh, uh, see, black I actually, Americans. I actually agree with that, Glenn. The 